Our final talk of the session before we move on to live Q&A is from Professor Ryan Kastner from the University of California at San Diego. Um, let, let us please play Ryan's video. Today, I would like to present to you a broad vision towards sensing the ocean at scale. My challenge to the community is to increase the spatiotemporal sampling frequencies by several orders of magnitude. This is a grand challenge. The ocean is vast and difficult to monitor, but it is an important challenge when it has substantial consequences to our environment and the economy. Unfortunately, I do not have a grand solution to this grand challenge, but I do have a lot of experience in developing and deploying technologies in the field. Some have been as successful, Many have been failures. I want to use this short talk to highlight two of our recent successful projects and describe the key elements that made them successful. We start with the mangrove monitoring project. In our main area of interest in Baja California Sur, we have tried different techniques near cities like La Paz to monitor mangrove forests. We have deployed drones to take over 10 terabytes worth of mangrove images which are much higher resolution than that of standard satellite images to create very detailed mangrove maps. This high resolution imagery has allowed us to take advantage of deep learning and convolutional neural networks to achieve accurate mangrove classifications. However, such a network takes in and classifies tiles or square sections of imagery rather than individual pixels, which greatly limits the precision of our classifications. The obvious first direction was to move away from classifying sections of images to classifying the individual pixels of the image. Thus, Arden Ma and myself, Sam Cole, used a UNet, which originally was designed for biomedical applications and applied it to classifying mangrove land areas. I approved on this and implemented a CRF, or a conditional random probability field, to improve these pixel classifications even more accurately. In addition, we also aim to augment our original CNN algorithm to use other forms of data to make our models more generalizable to different regions. I, Dylan Hicks, developed a novel hybrid CNN architecture which fuses drone imagery with planetscope satellite pixels. With this hybrid CNN, generated features from satellites, such as vegetation indices, can be incorporated along with original pixel values to help detect non-vegetation areas. This results in a more precise and accurate mangrove classifications when compared to other methods. And now I'd like to show you our work on the SmartFin project. Post of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, there is only one near shore buoy providing data for miles of shores. This is an issue because it creates an assumption that in the area that the buoy covers, all the oceanic parameters are the same. Imagine, if in addition to this nearshore buoy, each of these surfers below could become virtual buoys, recording important information about ocean health. This is what SmartFin hopes to bring to the table. We hope to gather thousands of new data points in understudied locations to help keep tabs on coastal health. As you can see below, in La Jolla Shores, we have already collected hundreds of data points by simply using the fin. The SmartFin has a range of sensors, including GPS, thermometer, and an IMU, or inertial measurement unit. These sensors allow the fin to determine its location and measure sea surface temperature in the surf zone. In the past, project teams used the IMU data to calculate peak direction and period of the waves, and began the difficult task of calculating wave height. This summer, we focused on improving this calculation by reducing noise in the data before it runs. Removing the peaks helped determine useful data from non-useful data. Ultimately, by using these methods, we reduced the average difference in wave height measurements between the nearest buoy and the SmartFin from about 14 inches to just five inches. SmartFin combines the immense grassroots power of the people with the unstoppable force of the scientific process taking a step in the right direction towards healing our planet. Why were these projects successful? One of the most important elements is a strong and broad collaboration across domains. Oceanographers must work closely with engineers and data scientists. Equally important is engaging the local stakeholders. We need buy-in from those who ultimately deploy the sensors and collect the data. If we want to sense at scale, we must be able to build the sensors at scale. Custom one-off prototypes do not provide a sustainable route for widespread usage. We should leverage existing commercial off-the-shelf technologies as much as possible. 
Finally, students are hungry for real world problems. They are eager to work long hours for little or no pay to apply their skill sets to problems that they care about. I'm excited to tell you more about these and other projects and discuss ways that we can leverage emergent technologies and passionate researchers to sense the ocean at scale. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, Ryan, and thanks to all of our uh, panelists and, and speakers uh, in this session.